Next question is from Joyful JJ. What are your favorite pre and post workout meals? We okay. get this question so much. That's why I want to answer it. I, I, at first, I think, oh, that's kind of silly because it's quite individual. But I mean, the question is on us, right? What do we like to eat? Did you see my pre workout yesterday? What was, what was your pre workout? You didn't see my pre workout yesterday? No. Yeah, a pound of uh, cotton candy grapes. Did, what? Uh, yeah. Did right. you really? Yeah, yeah. So you're the are, first person to tell me about those. I didn't even know that was a thing. That, yeah. yeah, these are grapes that have been bred to so taste the, like cotton candy. They are actually, they're, they've been patented in Florida, a farm out there. They went through, I want to believe, I think I read over a thousand different genetics of crossbreeding until they found the perfect cross and to create this cotton candy natural flavor. So nothing synthetic in it or fake or artificial. It's all real. Does it's it just, taste like cotton candy? Oh, oh, you haven't had them yet? No. Oh, I'll bring them in. I bought like 10 bags and froze a bunch. <laughs> so it's spot on like cotton candy. It's the most amazing, the most amazing grapes ever. They literally taste just <laughs> like cotton candy when you eat them. It's amazing. It's like, it's like God is How rolling bizarre. his eyes. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's an old, uh, I want to say Frank Zane. I thought for sure you, you would have heard of it. That's why I was eating cu- grapes pre-workout. A pound why? of grapes. The high, the high glycemic index, yeah. carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they taste that's, amazing. And they're it's cool. so funny. We have grapes that taste like cotton candy. And then there's cotton candy. There's grape flavor. Yeah. Like, what the hell's going on uh, here? <laughs> yeah. 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 So for me, uh, pre-workout, I don't like to eat something right before I work out. But if I do eat something, it's typically about two hours. Oh, we should talk about that. An hour or two yeah. before. We yeah. should talk about that. Like if yeah. you're eating it. So even when I eat the grapes, I'm eating a grapes. It gets high glycemic. So I know that it's going to convert faster to sugar. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll have grapes like an hour before. But if but I'm having, like a right before. No, an hour. An hour, right, right, an right. hour before uh, my workout. If I was to eat a meal that I'm hoping that's going to be quote unquote my pre-workout meal, it needs to be at least two hours before because mm-hmm. that's the what it takes on average to convert that over into sugar. Otherwise, uh, you know, people that eat a pre-workout meal 30 minutes or an hour before their workout, they're not even getting the benefits of that until after their workout. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I like two hours before, two or three hours before, and I'll have white rice. It's easily digestible for me. Um, I'll have some kind of easily digestible protein, whether fish or chicken and some vegetables. Um, and then I'll go into my workout. And if I go into my workout and I feel like I'm going to have a long, arduous, hard workout, then I'll have some coconut water uh, in my water bottle and I'll water it down with, with water. So I'll have like, you know, maybe like eight ounces of coconut water with another eight ounces of water. And I'll, I'll drink that throughout my workout. And that typically gives me the stamina to really go uh, long and hard. Post-workout, I, my favorite post-workout meal, give me lots of egg yolks. I want that cholesterol. Cholesterol helps with the recovery muscle building process. I've identified this a long time ago. Or I'll have chicken liver, which is also high in very, uh, very high in cholesterol. I don't do that super often just because it's so high in nutrients that I can overdo it. But typically egg yolks, um, either more white rice or I'll have rice cakes um, and some vegetables. And I just feel my best when I do something Steak, like that. Steak, rice, and avocado. That's my mm. post-workout. Okay. So similar the direction that you're going with that. Um, yeah, white rice, man. I just I I am I use a lot of white rice. So mm-hmm. I, and my pre-workout meal, if I was eating two hours before, would be real similar to yours. It would be some sort of a meat, a white rice, and a, and a vegetable uh, before. Now the only difference that uh, where I kind of play with what I have after I eat has to do with what my goal is currently. So. When I'm more in the phase of like I want to build right now and it's bulking or I want to put size on or work on my you know build strength and that's like a, a huge focus, then the steak, avocado, rice type of meal is is the is the post workout type of meal uh, or something similar to that. Uh, if I'm actually trying to lean out, I'll actually uh, stretch out a a you know a you know what are they fast yeah I, I hate to say fast because it's not like you're a, just not going to eat yeah for a I'm, while. Restri- I'm going to restrict because. When we train, especially if we train really hard, your body depletes like 80, 85% roughly, okay? And that's obviously going to be different for each person of your glycogen stores. And so, especially if I spend some time walking or doing something afterwards, you know, my body, hopefully, uh, an hour after I've trained really hard, is st- even if I'm sitting on the couch working or just relaxing or doing little things around the house, I hope, I'm hoping that my body is converting and using fat as a made source of fuel. So I'll actually use that to my benefit and stretch out until my next meal. 
and I'll go as long as I can until I feel like I really want to eat something. As long as I'm okay mm -hmm. and I don't feel like I'm like, I need to eat something really bad, I'll push it out two, four, six hours before I have the next meal. That's when I'm trying to lean out. So mm -hmm. just depends on my goals. Now, now, Justin, what kind of cheese do you have before you work? <laughs> I mean, the best kind. American cheese before. Yeah. I do Monterey <laughs> mid-workout. Yeah. Yeah. Gouda uh, for the post. Um, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> that actually be awesome. I, I, I typically will fast um, before going into a workout, but I've actually changed it up to where, like, I I load my breakfast now pretty heavy with uh, scrambled eggs, bacon. It's pretty consistently. That's all I eat. That's just that's that's the morning staple with coffee, and then the coffee kind of takes me into the workout. So um, I, I don't usually eat lunch till after the workout, even if it's late. Like I'll eat a late lunch afterwards and then it'll be like a bowl where mm -hmm. I'll have like a white rice combo with some like double meat of, you know, carne asada or basically Luna, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then um, after that, you know, whatever, who cares? We're only asking about those two meals. So <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. You know, studies will show that the, the best pre-workout meal um, that'll give you the best performance is typically high in carbohydrates. So Lots of protein and all that, you know, pre-workout doesn't make that big of a difference. The studies will show that it's a carbohydrate. Now, the, the argument meal. that I'll have with that, though, is this, is that if you're somebody who struggles with getting adequate protein in the day, so that's what's funny about these studies like that will show like this is the most optimal ratio of carbs, fat, protein for it. And I think that all goes out the window if you struggle to hit an RDA of one of those. Sure, right? Because if, now, now you're you're skipping a meal. Exactly. So if your ultimate goal is to build muscle and optimize performance and everything, and you're yeah. here, you're reading that this study says this type of meal is ideal. Well, yeah, that's ideal if all things are equal elsewhere. But if you are low on protein for the day and significantly low on protein or significantly low on healthy fats. Yeah, don't miss that opportunity. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, feed on that. Yeah, so, but, but what are the, stu the studies, I think, show? The last time I looked at them, at least, it was a, a four to one. It, it was, it was a four to one ratio. Yeah, I think it's like that. So four grams of carbs for every one gram of protein. That's what I, I would even bring it down and say three or two to one. So if you have 10 or 15 grams of protein, you're looking at, you know, 30 to 50 grams of carbs with it. Um, and then eat that about two or three hours uh, before your workout and then go into your workout. But, you know, look, this is this is important stuff for people who are like working out real hard and have everything kind of dialed in. Otherwise, I mean, you know what the most important thing you should consider with your meals is exactly what Adam said. Look at what you need. Forget about what's supposed to be the best pre-workout right, and look yeah. at what you need. That's going to give you the best results ultimately. The, those of you that are super dialed in, and you're super consistent with your workouts and you're training at a very, very high level, yeah. then it might make sense to kind of play For with me, those. it was like, what's not going to, you know, give me like gas. heartburn and gas and <laughs> diarrhea? Like that's real important, you know, because when you go into squat, you don't want all those factors fighting you. <laughs> yeah, give, uh, give you a little turbo it, at the it's, bottom. It's disaster. I mean, it, it would you could promote an authentic post on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. but hey, look, other shit, than that, there's no value. Hey, look, I shit my pants. Ah! I'm so real. Yeah, so real.